today's lesson. Today we are going to look at the steps that will help you to understand all financial accounting standards. So if you take any accounting standard and pass that accounting standard through those steps, it will help you to understand the key terms and then the principles and the concepts in that particular standard. And at the end, use the steps in solving practical examples. Okay, so if you take any of the accounting standard like international accounting standard or international financial reporting standard and pass them through those steps to help you to get the concept and then use them to solve practical questions at the end. Remember, international accounting standard were the old ones, so they are being revised by the international financial reporting standard. So for the purpose of understanding the steps, I will use one of the accounting standards, which will be IA 16, property, plant and equipment. So I'll use this particular accounting standard in explaining the steps. Now, without wasting my time, the first step that you, take, you will take any accounting standard to is the school. Anytime you take a financial reporting standard, the first thing you're supposed to look out for is what? The school. Now, the school comes with two things. We have the cover. The cover simply means what are some of the items or what are the, some of the assets that the, that particular standard cover. And what are some of the items that particular standard doesn't cover. So there's the categories of items that particular you know, standard cover. And then the category of items that we cannot capture them under that particular you know, standard is what we look at what the school and then the cover. So if you take IAS 16, PPE, PPE covers only tangible non-current assets. So if you have anything like intangible non-current assets, it doesn't fall under what IAS 16, that is supposed to be covered. So if you take goodwill, we cannot, you know, uh, account for goodwill under what IAS 16, but we can account for goodwill under IAS, you know, um, 38 or IFRS 3, business combination, okay? Now, there are some items that are very similar. So, for instance, I mentioned Goodwill. It's an asset, and which is also a, a long-term asset. But it's what, it's the only difference is that it's an intangible compared to a furniture, which is what tangible. Is that okay? So, these are very similar. But there is a device different standard for what? The Goodwill or patent. Patent is also an intangible asset. There's a device standard for it. Although they are similar, they are having different standards. So, therefore, it doesn't come under this scope. This particular standard doesn't cover good rule or patent, so very important. So if you take an accounting standard, first of all, look at the categories of items that particular standard cover. Now that you have been able to establish the item that the standard cover, then what, how do, or how does the standard what explain those items? How does the standard define those items? So for instance, if you take IAS 16, PPE, the standard define it to be what? tangible non-current assets that are used in the production of goods and services in the business or for administrative purposes or for rental to others which will be used in the business for more than one accounting period so that is the definition that has outlined or you know given by that particular standard very very important okay so if you take a standard look at the scope the scope has to cover uh, do with what it cover and the definition of what key terms now the next step is going to be recognition. Now recognition, the key word that is supposed to come to mind when you say we come to recognition is when. So when. And I'll put in. So when should you enter the item in your financial statement? So if you take a financial statement of an entity or a company, when should you recognize this particular item that, oh, this particular item, I can now write it on the face of the financial statement of an entity. So every standard has a condition or a criteria there that we are supposed to look out for. When those items meet those conditions, then we cannot recognize them. So for instance, if you take IS 16, we are saying that the economic benefit of the item or let's say furniture should be enjoyed or should flow to the business. 
and those economic benefits should be measured reliably so these two conditions or any other conditions outlined in the framework if those two conditions are met then why not we can then go ahead and what? recognize our furniture in the financial statement it's very very important the next you know the next step has to do with measurement so after you have recognized the item what value should you present in the financial statement that has to do with what measurement now measurement also comes with two things we have initial and subsequent measurement Now, now that you have recognized that, oh, this furniture can be recognized in your books. What value are you going to enter in your books? What value? So that has to be what measurement. According to IA 16, if you go and purchase a, a furniture or an item of PPE, the purchase price and any other cost related to what, uh, directly related to that particular asset can be captured as what? The cost or can be measured or can be part of what the initial measurement. That is initial measurement. So what value should you what? enter in your financial statement for that particular item that has met the recognition uh, conditions if that item is going to stay in your books at the end of the accounting period and continue to the next accounting period how should then we how should we then value it then that is going to be what subsequent measurement so if you take pp subsequent measurement should we use the cost model or we should use the revaluation model so if you use the cost model how will you account for depreciation if you use the revaluation model, how will you account for revaluation loss or gain? Those things are what the subsequent measurement. So if you take any accounting standard, please make sure that you look out for if the standard covers subsequent or initial measurement, you look out for that. Then the next step is de-recognition. After you have recognized, you measure, then de-recognize. Now, key recognition has to do with, so it's also when, by this time we are looking at out. When, out. When should we take the asset from our financial statement? When should we stop, you know, um, the accounting for that particular item? When should we stop? When should we take it from our books? Very, very important. Key recognition. Okay. So maybe when you have finished utilizing all the economic benefits, that is attributable to the asset then we should take it from our uh, you know our financial statement or when we have disposed of that particular item then we should what take it off from our financial statement so the conditions are very important so the every standard will outline as to when you should what do you recognize an item from a financial statement of an entity so the recognition is also very very important okay then, then the next step which is supposed to be the final is disclosure Now, disclosure is basically providing notes which will give you or which will give end users more information about that particular what, standard. So, for instance, you have used the cost model in revaluing your or in your subsequent measurements. How did you use the cost model? So, the note will give that or use the cost model and then your depreciation to use the straight line method because you, th those things will not be present in, on the face of what, the financial statement. So the note will give us more details. So disclosure is just giving us more notes about what or the things that happen in what that particular accounting standard. So if you take any accounting standard, please make sure you pass them through these five key principles or five key steps, and you'll get the concept and understanding. And we we'll use we can use those steps in getting what right, solving the practical economics. Remember, some of the standards may not follow chronologically. Some may turn a particular step. It's very, uh, you know, obvious that it can happen that way. Okay, but those steps are general steps that can help you in understanding all accounting standards. So, see you in our next video.